use this for the edit before <laughs> you guys are making fun of me. Okay. <laughs> What's up, nonstick lovers? It's Steve from Made In. Today, we're talking about the best ways to maintain your nonstick cookware so it lasts. Stay tuned. Nothing lasts forever, but with the right cleaning techniques, cooking methods, and maintenance, this thing will actually last 70 times longer than ceramic cookware. That's exactly why you see these in professional kitchens all over the world. First, I wanna start with utensils. And if you remember anything I say, make sure to remember this. Stay away from metal utensils. It's gonna scratch your surface. You're gonna to have to throw it away and buy another one. We have a number of options here. This one is actually my favorite hardwood utensils. This thing is sturdy enough so you can move around those heavy objects sitting on your pan, but it's soft enough to where it's not going to scratch your surface and that's what we're going for here. So the next material I want to talk to you about is silicone. Silicone is absolutely great because it withstands high heat. It's soft enough to use. This is great for moving around eggs, but again, it keeps your surface safe. Something very similar to silicone is a little bit more sturdy is nylon. Nylon is great because it moves around those heavy objects in your pan. But remember this, it doesn't deal with heat as well as silicone, so you wanna make sure to get it off your pan once you're done using it. Now, if you're like me and you can't get away from tongs, it's okay because they have versions with nylon tips. It won't scratch the surface of the nonstick, but it gives you that maneuverability that you're looking for when it comes to flipping something as delicate as fish. So those are the best materials that you'll want to use for your nonstick cookware. And I will say one more time, do not use metal. The first thing you want to remember is make sure when you're bringing this thing to heat, you have something already in the pan. So I'm talking about food or fat. This is going to help it come to the temperature that it needs to without affecting the surface. Also, you want to make sure to avoid cooking sprays. This can build up over time, be very tough to clean, and then ultimately damage your surface. Now, when you're cooking on a stovetop, we say don't go above a medium heat. And if you want to put it in the oven, go ahead. It's oven safe up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's talk about cleaning your non-stick cookware. First things first, stay away from the dishwasher. The high temperatures and harsh chemicals will start affecting that surface over time. Instead, make sure you're washing this thing by hand. All you need is some soap, some warm water, and a soft sponge, and it's gonna do the job for you. Now, when you're washing the inside, make sure you use the soft side of the sponge, and do not forget the base as well. When you're done, dry it off, store it away, and you're good to go. Nine times out of 10, some soap, water, and a soft sponge is gonna take care of everything, but every now and then, you get a sticky mess on your hand. This was me actually trying to cook some simple syrup and forgetting about it, but it's okay because we have a technique that's gonna take care of this. First thing I'm gonna do is cover this with water and then take it over to the stove. Turn the heat on here, maybe about medium to low. Once this comes to a simmer, I'm gonna use my wooden spoon and kind of break it up and see what we're working with. You can see some of it coming up here, which is exactly what we wanted, but there's still some stuck um, areas that need a little bit more work. So now we're gonna take it to the next step, which is adding just a little bit of vinegar, a little bit of baking soda. It's a couple of teaspoons, give or take. Let's go ahead and mix this in. We're gonna add some baking soda here. All right, so I'm gonna let this sit for a couple of minutes, still simmering, and then we'll come back and then see uh, if we're able to get those burnt on pieces off. And this is just what we wanted to see. All the stuck on bits have dissolved. So what I'm gonna do is cut the heat, let this cool down completely. I'm gonna take it over to the sink, soap, water, a soft sponge, wash it off, dry it completely, and we are good to go. Totally clean. We got all the stuck on bits off without damaging that beautiful nonstick surface. And now we just want to make sure everything is dry and both pans look absolutely beautiful. If you're like me, I like to put these in the cupboard. What's most important is when you're stacking these, you want something in between the two surfaces to keep that nonstick surface safe. I like using a napkin. All it takes is unfolding this just like that there's no contact between that stainless bottom and that nonstick surface. 
It's totally safe and ready to be put away. So there are a few more points I wanna make sure to hit on. Number one, go ahead and get the food out of the pan once you're done cooking with it. Do not store the food inside the pan itself. You're gonna take that food, put it in a Tupperware, put it in the fridge, whatever you need to do. Get this thing cleaned off and dried completely and then store it away and you're good to go. Another point I'd like to make is, when it comes to acidic food, don't let it sit in the pan for too long. What we don't want the acid to do is start sitting in the pan and affecting the surface itself, which would lead to a less nonstick surface down the road. And finally, you don't want to shock your pan. As soon as you're done with the oven or the stovetop, just give it time to cool down before you take it to the sink and clean it off. So there you have it. I gave you some tips and techniques that are really going to help you extend the life of your nonstick cookware for years. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to give us a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like it, make sure to subscribe because we got some good stuff coming out. And also, if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comment box below and we'll get right back to you. Once again, I'm Steve from Made In. Catch you next time.